Hey everyone, welcome back to another welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we are playing Foreign Affairs by Choices. Now last time ooh, things definitely got interesting. Things definitely got better in this book. Things are totally getting better in this book. Like like it piques my interest now. Okay. Basically some attack a some guys in black mask attacked attacked us and now we have to um find out find out who organized it or we don't know who it is but it's either ain't Aina or the other guy oh demarco it's either Aina or demarco most people think it's Aina but i feel like if it is Aina it's probably a, there has to be a reason for it. If it's DeMarco, then then that would make sense because I had never heard of this guy. I've never seen this guy at all. All right, let's. I'm, I'm done waiting. Let's let's get let's get this done. You have a revelation about your attackers, but is the damage already done? What damage? Oh yeah, they poured fake blood on me and took a picture and left. Hmm. Foreign Affairs. Mending Fences. Chapter 13. You turn to Dione, eyes wide as you realize only one other person had any idea where I'd be when I was attacked. Aina. Oh, so it is. What? But no. That doesn't make any sense. Why would RTA do that? What is, why does anyone do anything like that? Maybe she was offered money? You sigh and rub your face. There's only one way to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to go talk to her. You should let your security detail handle this. They can take Aina into custody and... I need to be sure about this. I don't want to turn it into a whole thing before I know for certain it's her. I could still be wrong about this. God, I hope I'm wrong about this. Me too, man. If you're sure, but take Tatum if she really is behind this. You need to make sure you're safe. If I had Tatum waiting just outside and fill him in on the way to Aina's office. And that's why I need to talk to her alone. Absolutely not. You're lucky I'm letting you near her at all. Please, Tana, if we both go in there, they'll sure get defensive. I might be able to catch her off guard on my own. I promise I'll be careful. You can listen in from outside. Tana clenches his jaw as he considers your request. Finally, he steps aside his face deadly. Fine. But if anything happens, or if you get the slightest sense... Something is wrong. Call me in. You nod, you turn toward the door, take a deep breath, and step us inside. You mean, you know those guys that attacked us in the last chapter said they're from Ardona, right? I don't know if it's true or not. And that's Blaine's country. So, maybe something is going on. That's, that's, a, that's the thing. Anna looks from her desk with a start. Anthony, are you okay? I heard about what happened on the mountain. Save it, Aina. You were the only one... What? What are you saying? I'm saying there's no way my attackers could have known to find me at the lake unless you told them. I know you're upset, but that mountain was covered in people. Discovered in people looking for you. Yes, there were reporters looking for me near the resort, not violent masked men in the middle of nowhere. The fact that you're still trying to lie to me about it, Aina, is... Aina's facade trembles, then breaks. Anthony, I'm so sorry. Something inside you crumbles at the confirmation of her betrayal. I don't understand. How long has this been going on? Since the beginning of the year. I've been feeding information about you to my contact. The beginning of the year? 
So everything was a lie? No, it isn't what it sounds like, I swear. A man approached me before the year started with an offer. I don't even know his name. I've never seen his face. I swear, I'm as in the dark as you are. Somehow I'm having a hard time believing you right now, you know. In fact, I'm having a hard time even looking at you. Save it. Just stay, for, stay away from me. He marched toward the door and Tam meets you, his sharp gaze set on. Should I bring in the traitor in for, for more questioning? Don't bother. She's not a threat anymore. So Aina was behind it. You followed Tam across the campus to the city office and you with your mother and Winston. Adam waits outside as you enter. Winston sits in one of the armchairs as your mom paces agitated around the room. As soon as she spots you, your mom rushes towards you and sweeps you into a hug. Oh, Anthony, thank God you're okay. Oh, now you're worried about me. I deserve that. I have a lot to apologize for. Not the least of which is getting you mixed up in politics and all. I think I'm sorry for how I spoke to you on the phone yesterday. When I heard about the attack, I, I couldn't stop to think about it. What if that had been our last conversation? I was completely out of line. I know, you're under pressure way more than the last election. Even so, I can't let that turn me into a monster. You're my son. I love you more than anything. She takes your hand, squeezing it tight. Then you better win and make it all worth it. You wrap your arms around her and, hu and she hugs you back fiercely. After a moment, she pulls back enough, far enough to, for Winston to let her in. So, what do we know? The attackers are refusing to talk. One mutters something about Ordona during an interview, but we haven't learned anything else. Press your lips together and look at the floor. I could tell them about Aina, but what good would it do? She doesn't even have a name of, for the person who contacted her, let alone the actual assassins. And I'm sure Mom will just say, I let my emotions get in the way. I'm going to screw up to add to the pile. The good news is that we were able to take the perpetrators into custody quickly, enough to keep, keep the attack out of the press. Will we be able to keep it that way? Unless well, one of Anthony's classmates talks to a reporter, yes. That said, I believe we should consider postponing or canceling this peace summit. Why would we do that? Cause, because, think about it. And it, you just, we just got attacked by people in masks and then, yes. and if we do a peace summit thing, there could be like a sniper on the roof or something trying to assassinate you or, or an assassin. Like, think about it. Something like that. This attack is a trouble develop, troubling development. And the fact that we managed to thwart, thwart it will only dri drive whoever orchestrated it to act again. Exactly. Possibly even attempt to make a larger statement. And uh, An event like the summit will be too tempting a target. Then we'll double security, triple it. Well, there are also rumors that several key countries are getting cold feet if they pull out. <laughs> if they pull out, they then they pull out. We have to forge ahead. Yeah, I yeah. But we can't be bullied out of it. It goes against the entire spirit of what mom's trying to do. Exactly. We stick to the plan and we make sure Anthony has the most advanced security detail possible. Very well. I'll make the arrangements. I think the first move is to relocate your fundraiser, your next fundraiser. Good idea. If it's close to campus, then you can stop by, Anthony. You can even bring your f friends if you like. You see the gesture as the olive branch it is. Sure, that sounds nice. Mom gives you a gentleman smile, and as Winston goes over to the plants, over the plants, 
That afternoon, you return to your suite and flop onto the couch, mind racing with the events of the last 24 hours. I miss having normal problems. Marsh's head appears over the back of the couch. You hold on, you hold out one arm and let him climb down onto your chest. Yes, seeing you does help, Marsh. At least a little. So you can get comfortable, there's a knock at the door. You open to find Dean Lewis and Professor Masako? Mr. Williams, may we come in? Sure, I, I guess. It's good to see you look you're looking well after that terrible incident on the ski trip. Oh thanks, am I in trouble? Oh no, nothing like that. We just wanted to make sure you're holding up okay. And that you still feel safe being on campus. Oh, well, thank you. I am, and I do so long as you're okay with whatever extra precautions my security team has planned. Of course, her well-being is of the utmost importance to us. You eye them curiously. Their words are warm, but there's something stiff in the way they hold themselves. Hmm... Is there anything we can do to ease your mind here on, or on campus? I should tell them about you know, but something feels off. Anthony, are you alright? I don't think I need anything else except maybe a few days to get my head straight before I go back to class. Well, we'll make sure all of your professors are aware. You have an excuse absence for as long as you need you need. You give them both a tight smile as they exit. You get exactly four seconds of peace before Tatum appears frowning anxiously. What do they want? They said they were checking, just checking on me, but isn't it kind of weird for them to just show up at my suite without warning? I was thinking the same thing. Maybe. What is it? Well, it stands to reason that whoever paid off Ana's set could have gotten than the rest of the faculty, too. Are you saying I can't trust anyone? You can trust me. I know that, but what about my professors, my friends? Down circles the suite, checking every window. There's no way to be sure yet. For now, stay on your guard. This is never going to end, is it? So we get the person? Yes. <clears throat> Until we get the guy? No. I'm sure, Anthony. I'm sorry, Anthony. I'm just... I just... I can't stop thinking about how... I failed you on the on that mountain. How I, how I let you be exposed. Tell him, no. You can't think like that. You weren't even on duty when I was attacked. You didn't fail me. I did. I never taught you how to protect yourself. I let you... She believed I'd keep you safe, and then I wasn't there when it mattered most. I don't want you to be in that position ever again. So, what do we do? Let me teach you some basic self-defense. We can go to the gym right now. That way, even if something happens to me, you can protect yourself. I feel a lot better knowing that you've got some techniques that'll keep you safe. All right, we'll learn some self-defense. <clears throat> Sorry. It would be nice to not to feel so useless. Give me a few minutes to clear it with the rest of the team and organ organize an escort. Is that really necessary? Yes, I haven't trained you yet. A four-man escort later. Four people? Oh yeah, they did this with the princess once. I saw it on TV. You step in into a gym, an empty gym tucked away in a corner under the campus. Diana sweeps the area, checking the locker rooms, the storage cupboards, every possible hiding place. All clear. Where is everyone? At the staff leave for a couple of hours. The team will. Man, every point of entry while we train. 
Mike going a little overboard. Render orders from Winston and your mother to be cautious. And as far as I'm concerned, this is still nowhere near enough. You have me under as much surveillance as the crown jewels. I'm still a person. I need fresh air and small talk. Now, as much as you need to be kept alive. You honestly think that someone who threw, who painted at me, is really plotting my murder? We don't know what they want, and the, until they're in custody, I'm going to act like they are the highest possible threat, and so you, should you. Come on, let's find something you can beat. Music to my ears. Tom holds a punching bag steady for you, slapping it with his palm. First things first, no punching. Isn't self-defense? Seriously? Punching someone is the best way to break your knuckles. When someone with more power or training rushes you, you're going to have to think fast and smart. Your knees, your feet, and heel, and the heel and the sides of your hands are the strongest weapons you have. You need to use them against the weakest areas of your opponent. Are you asking me to me to need my attacker in the doesn't that break some kind of code? There's no bro there's no bro code during an attack, but no. Only go for the groin as a last resort. For SARS, your attacker might not Oh But groin injuries cause people to fold inward toward you. Cam identifies positions. He's on the punching bag as he speaks up. Nose, throat, knees, you'll need to size up your opponent. And quickly identify which spot is within reach. But for now, we'll assume they're about your height. Yeah, kicking someone in the groin is the worst pain ever. You, It lasts like a few minutes. Or seconds, I don't know. Let's do this. Start with the nose. What are you going to do? You flex your palm and drive the heel of it firmly into the back your nose. Good. You stun them a little. But we want to break their nose. Get them so dazed and bloody that you have time to get away. Put it behind it. Damn shifts moving behind you to guide your body as you practice the move again and again. Aya! <laughs> Good. That should buy you a solid minute to run. Now you say that you've grabbed you by the, the arm. Okay. Sounds like I'm not doing so hot. But their neck is exposed within reach. How do you get free? Hmm. You win one arm and bring it hard against the uh, in the horizontal chop. Good. Make sure you lead with your side, the palm, the side of your palm, not your fingers. You try again, palming your opponent into the bag, like this. Exactly. Wish I aim for it on, on an actual neck. Tedum pulls his collar aside, showing the long curve of his neck. If you get a clear shot at the throat, go for this. Otherwise, you want to strike between the ear and the sh shoulder, giving it everything you've got. It'll hurl. It'll hurt. And then I run. Yes, the moment their grip loosens and don't look back. You nod, com committing his advice to memory. Okay, last one. How would you do damage to an attacker's knees? Hmm. Sweep the leg. You watch down like an action star and swing your leg around, kicking the bag hard f from the side. And stay down. And do it. And do it like you have a split second to act. 
What was wrong with that? Your thinking was good, but a kick like that from someone who is highly trained won't have enough strength to take break someone down. You also put yourself in a vulnerable position physically. A large attacker could throw you know, themselves on top of you. Now, unrealistic action movies? What should I do instead? <clears throat> Keep it simple. Raise your leg and slam your heel into their knee as they get closer. He holds you steady as you follow his instruction. The punching bag swings violently backward as you take out its knee. Better? Now let's put this into practice in the ring. You want me to fight you? I want you to take me out. He leads you to the bu to, a, to the boxing ring. He holds out the ropes apart for you and climbs through after you crack cracking his knuckles and roll his neck I'm going to try and restrain you size me up and defend yourself according but you don't hold back okay but without wearing town charges toward you but I gotta say those are cool looking masks you flinch as the memory of your attack flashes through your mind you force yourself to focus on the present You usually raise one leg and drive a heel of the foot, just about ten, with every ounce of strength you have. He drops to one knee, eyes tearing with pain. You kneel beside him. Crap, are you, are you hurt? Yeah, I'm hurt. That was great, but he grabs you by around the waist and tackles you on the mat, pinning you beneath him. You're supposed to run when I went down. You look into his dark... Okay, no. I'll get it right this time. He climbs off of you, then offers a hand to your feet. Don't worry. We'll keep practicing until be until it becomes muscle memory. Until it becomes a reaction, not a thought. Bring it on. You ran until time's advice becomes instinct. After hours of exploration, you sag onto the ropes... And panting a little. So, are you feeling better? Me? We came here for you. I think we both know we came here for you as much as we did for me. He joined you on the ropes with a pain groan. Does less constantly anxious about you count? Because then, yes. Maybe now I'll be able to get some sleep. How do you feel? You think of the sand running toward you in the snow, but this time you don't feel so afraid. This time you know exactly how you, you would handle yourself. I feel in control. <clears throat> you return home a short while later, body starting to ache after Talon's drills, but feeling safer than you have in a while. The evening finds you wondering. Where whether you can be bothered to get DeMarco to organize a security detail to escort you to dinner. What do you think, Marsh? Fresh air and widespread security or takeout? Then you hear a thud from the living room. What was that? Hey, get your hands off me! Oh no. You open the door or to find one of the windows wide open and Murphy with a hole on Blaine. Come on, Murph. You know me. We're buds, remember? Hmm? Okay, fine. Maybe we're not buds. But you can't honestly tell me you don't want some of this. Lane has a takeout bag under Murphy's nose, feeling the air with a delicious smell. Wow, you sure actually are a human. Blaine, what are you doing here? Apparently, Mr. Strong Silent Type here doesn't think climbing through the window is climb is an appropriate way to reach you. Mind calling him off? What am I getting out of it? Good food and better company if you want. Just a start, but I'm gonna need deets. You wave Murphy away 
and he trudges us off reluctantly, leaving you alone with Blaine. You're lucky Tanum is off duty tonight, and you'd already be in a interrogation cell. Honestly, I didn't expect Murphy to be here either, with Dione at the dining hall. So, to what do I owe this visit? You've been la laying pretty low since the attack. Though I see how you're, you were doing. But officially, I'm here to hang out with Dione and just now realizing that she's not around. Whoops. <clears throat> Excuse me. Blaine flops onto the couch, tossing the bag she holds, holding onto the coffee table. The smell coming from inside is irresistible. Marsh pats furiously up to the bag of food, giving him a sniff. Blaine gently moves him away. No way, little man. This is people food. Stomach rumbles loudly. If you haven't noticed, if you hadn't noticed, I'm a little hungry. Not sure if this will help. I found a place near here that does Ardonian cuisine. It may be too much for our, your Ruthven palate. I don't think there's a single Ardonian restaurant in Rutherland. What do you think? That's probably for the best. Your country's country would grind to a halt if you realized how good cheese can be when we do it. Is that so? Over cheese? You have no idea. Chaos would reign, people would strip, strip and slather, bring themselves in our blueberry coolies. God's sake, enough hype, feed me. It smells way too good to be be that fermented fish thing you guys eat, so I think I'll be good. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. But as it happens tonight, we're serving. Blaine and begins pulling out food out of the bag. The smell of fresh bread hits you as you him that's a loaf. Oh, a loaf of bread. But wait, there's more. Cheese. She produces a bowl, carefully arranging the cheese and meats. Oh, that looks good. Cheese, crackers, meat, and and bread. I give you the formage flambe. Blaine lights one of the cheese on fire. Wait, what? Whoa, it's so much more flammable than I was expecting. The finest dining you'll ever get is simple food plated nicely, or at least that's what my grandma used to say. After a few more moments, Blaine blows out the flame. You tear off a piece of of her by salty bread and smear a healthy helping of cheese over it. It tastes divine. You've never mentioned your grandma before. Are you too close? Too, too close? Yes and no. She wasn't much of a kid person and nobody in my family is exactly what you'd call warm and fuzzy. Where does the yes part come into it? She tolerated me which is a big improvement over how she felt about everyone else. Fair enough. I made this for her once. I lived for a couple of months of when I was about nine, when, when mom and dad were off on a round the world trip. One night you want to Rummage flambe. I was trying to impress her, so I begged her to let me make it for her instead of the servants. I feel like this story is headed toward disaster. Not at all. I made the best fl from 
Marge Flambe she'd ever tasted. She didn't understand how I could make it so much better than her personal chef. What was your secret? I used the Ardor Ardonian monk cheese she'd have. You've been saving for a special occasion. Wait. You mean the... You mean from that mountain monastery in the mountains? The monastery in the mountains. The one that makes ten wheels of cheese, like, every five years? That sounds yummy. That's the one. Was she angry? She never found out. What? She had the cheese for 20 years. She was never going to eat it. Hold on. Are you serious? That cheese would be rotten by now. She never ate the cheese, but she had it for 20 years. It could be rotten by now. I think she forgotten she even had it. What did you tell her? That I made it with love, and that's what made it so special. And that worked? Not at all. She said not to ruin the flavor with my syrupy, sentimentally some mentality sentiment <coughs> never mind you laugh meaning her eyes they're crinkled with a smile but there's a hint of pain there do you still get to see her often she died there was an attack on my family a couple years ago a couple years back it was a big news story at the time and she light opens her mouth to continue then shakes her head Never mind. You don't want to hear about that. You've got enough trauma to deal with. You don't need mine. Blaine shoots you a soft smile, then motions to the rest of the food on the coffee table. So now that my delivery is done, I can leave the rest, rest of what's in the bag with you. And dip. Or. Or. Or I could stick around and we can. I'm going to say over a frankly upsetting amount of cheese, but it's up to you. I totally get it, you need some time to choose of, though. Personally, the idea of not spending the night next to you is almost physically painful. Honestly, I don't want to be alone tonight. You think... Even Ardonian is better than sol solitude. Even you, but only because you promised to feed me. I intend to keep that promise. Come on. The two of you, you relocate to the kitchen counter, and Blaine removes the cover from the next container, unleashing the heavy, heavenly smell of m marinated meat and spices. May I present duck stew? Ugh. Okay, I admit, Ardonians might know a few things. Things about to, how to eat. If Ruthlians admitted that, that more often, the history of, the two, of our two countries would be a lot different. Yeah, a lot different. You take a spoonful of the stew... The perfectly cooked and seasoned meat filling your heart, your pal palate with a rich, hearty flavor. I'm going to be dreaming about this for weeks. That's why Ardonians only eat this on special occasions. It's too powerful for everyday consumption. My mother had a killer recipe for it. My grandma had a killer recipe for it. She wouldn't let the family cook anywhere near the kitchen when it was time to make duck stew. Because she didn't want them stepping on her shoes. Nope, because it's a family secret. She never even, even wrote this recipe down. When she died, the recipe died with her. 
Just to add, add it to the pile of what we lost that day. Who was targeted? Lane concentrates on ripping off another piece of bread, her voice even and as she dips it in the stew. We still don't know. They planted a bomb under my family's car while we were at the opening of the new assembly. Yeah, embassy. They could have been af after dad or just or all of us, but the bomb went off too soon. It exploded as we were approaching the car. That must have been terrifying. It looks... It definitely wasn't. As cool as it looks in the movies. And your grandma? She died in the attack? No, she wasn't hurt in the attack. But she changed afterward. She refused to leave her house. Got suspicious of her security team and staff. After that, her health went downhill you know, pretty quickly. The attack made her so afraid to live. I'm so sorry, Blaine. I must think I'm an idiot for all these precautions over a can of red paint. Blaine lets out a breath and looks at you. Anthony, you were attacked. It doesn't matter what you were attacked with. It's always scary. I'm glad you and your team are taking it seriously, but... She sighs heavily, staring at the depths of the stew. I know better than you than anyone. Fear can be just as bad as any physical damage, maybe worse. She reaches out to the to cup your cheek and you lean in to touch her touch. Just promise me you won't let this make you too afraid to live your life the way you want it. I promise. The attack was scary and it easily could have been worse, but I'm not going to let my fear control me. I won't give my attackers the satisfaction. Good. That's a lot easier said than done. So if you need someone, I know where to find you. Tell me more about your family. I know their basic political history, but that's it. That's because I have a personal policy to avoid talking about them as much as possible. Because you're embarrassed by them? Are you kidding? You saw how they acted during Parents Weekend? And that and that was like half the conversation. They're more embarrassed of me. I don't talk about them because when you're the first daughter of Ardonia, it's hard not to have a conversation about my parents. It's all anyone wants to talk, to, talk about. Ah, uh, yes. I know the feeling. I knew you would, and I'd like to point out that you have that I haven't uh, probed you for details about your mom. That's because you don't care. Lane smirks and shrugs. Well, I care about you, and I know she's an unavoidable part of your life. Seems like I should know something. Fine. But how about a trade? I'll give you one embarrassing story about my mom. And you give me one about your parents. Deal? Deal. Go on, I'm listening. Well, there was that one time. Try to pack me lunch. Like a brown bag lunch in, a, in the movies. We don't really have those in Ardonia. My mom, I had, I had to, um, I had a packed lunch. I did it all the time when I was in school. High school, actually. Mostly in high school, because I can't buy lunch and I didn't have money. I mean, I did, but I usually just, you know. Then you're lucky. I, I mean, I always knew my mom couldn't really cook, but you, you think she'd be able to throw some stuff in a bag? I was pretty young, maybe kindergarten, and when I sat down at the table, lunch table, I pulled out a single charred hot dog with very wet carrot sticks and yogurt. Like, four containers of it. Four containers of yogurt? Please tell me she forgot to pack you a spoon. Oh yeah, fortunately one of my classmates took pity on me and didn't make 
Let me use the the hot dog as the yogurt shuffle shovel. All right, I'll admit that was pretty good, but I'm pretty sure I can top it. Doubtful. Game on. Allow me to tell you about the time my dad challenged one of his with his cabinet members to a duel. A duel? That can't be legal. It is it is in Ardona. There's obscure law that tell that lets the Prime Minister challenge someone to a duel if they have sufficiently wounded his honor and that of the nation. And when was this clause first written? About five years ago. Last employed shortly thereafter, but that didn't stop my mom from telling my dad to go for it. Your mom? What did this count member do? Oh, that's the best part. He insulted the striker on the Ardonian foot national football team, and my mom happens to be a super fan. I've literally never seen her up so upset. This is what happens when sports fans get upset. Okay, I knew I didn't know much about your parents. The favorite part is that the cabinet member accepted he did the duel. That's how well, he thought the striker was. How'd your dad feel about this? Oh, not good. He was not prepared to die in a duel over some athlete my mom was crushing on but there what but there he was so what happened did they have pistols at dawn or whatever not quite the night before the striker had some crazy goal on stoppage time to win the game so my mom took that as proof she had already won the point she said my dad would draw the challenge Sure, it's definitely weird than mine. It's no contest. I hate to say, I told you so. No, you don't. Now that I've got you buttered up, Lane opens the final container. Is that pudding? <clears throat> Careful where you point that lack of enthusiasm. This is the national dessert of Ardona we're talking about. It's a whole milk mixed mixed with grated ginger rice, ginger rice, a little honey, and just a touch of added sugar. The ginger gives this gives it this amazing spice, and you cook it so long it comes out the texture of velvet. Come on, you know you want to try it. You take a as in spoonful of the pudding. And your eyes open wide at the explosion of flavor, the sly sweetness of the honey, the spicy ginger, or the creaminess of the milk. Wow, it really packs a punch. Yeah. <laughs> the beauty is it is in the simplicity. Anyone can make this, and it's so delicious. Yeah, anyone in America can make it. When you put it that way, I can see how this is the Ardonian d National Desert. You take a sp take spoonful after spoonful of the pudding, focusing in silent on the dessert in front of you. But when you look up, you notice Blaine's only got eyes for you. The intensity of her stare almost warm on your skin. Uh, I think... I think we're about to get it now. Shh. Oh, not yet. You were here when I needed you. You kiss her again, and she wraps her arms around you, pulling you closer. You sigh as Blaine's hand moves down this small... Into the small of your back coming to a rest along your waist. It might actually be better than my sacred Ardonia dessert. It's definitely sweeter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry. 
She chuckles as she leans in to capture your lips. You trail a hand along, she gazing into her eyes. I'm glad you came over. I needed this. What about this? She shows her mouth down your neck, pressing opened mouth kisses to your skin that leave you breathless. Then she makes her way way up to the sensitive spot just behind your ear, and you shiver in her arms. Three, two, one, The next morning, you hear the muffled sounds of an argument outside your door. What now? You, ch you can check me for weapons or recording devices, whatever you want. I just need to talk to him. Now what's going on? Hurry outside to find Agent DeMarco and his team standing like a brick wall in front of the door, blocking Aina. Aina... Even at this distance, you can't help but notice that she looks tired, dis, dis heavily, like she hasn't slipped, slept since the last time you spoke. Marco, Presley, move aside. I can't advise that, Mr. Anthony. Mr. Anthony? What? We're under strict orders to not let anyone in. Whose orders? Because last time I checked, you worked for me. I promise I'm not here to cause any more trouble. Marco and Presley gl glower at her, but move aside. You let Anna into the suite, crossing your arms as she takes a seat on the couch. Your bodyguards stand at the edge of the room, ready to jump in the moment notice. Thank you for talking to me. Anthony, I know it must be difficult after what I've done. I'll hear you out. But only because you deserve answers, not because you deserve my time. Right, I get that. <clears throat> Anna clears her throat and smooths out her skirt before forcing herself to meet your gaze. First, I wanted to apologize again. I know, I know, sorry doesn't even begin to cover the hurt I've caused you, but I decided to tell you anything you want to know. Anything that might help you uncover who ordered your attack. Why should I trust you? Just anything you say, this could be a trick. I know it's not worth it, worth much, but my word is all that I can offer. Narrow your eyes at her. Fine. What did you, t what did you, what did you tell me? What did you tell your employer about me? Mostly just information on what you did at school, and details on your schedule. When I knew it, I was also encouraged to set for a scandal. Which is why you partnered me up with Blaine for the project and wouldn't let us trade. I suggested the pairing to Professor Masako, yes. And when that didn't work, you told the press where I'd be at that night during Parents Week weekend. Not exactly. I gave my contact blueprints of campus, and that included some secret tunnels that would let them sneak in and out of undetected. And I did... And all I did that night was tell my contact you left the dinner early. I had no idea where you'd gone, but the tunnels must have been how they got away so quickly. And you claim to have no idea who your employer is? None. I wasn't lying when I said I never met him. Look. She pulls out her phone, taps through it for a moment, and hands it to you. You peer at you peer at the screen, scroll through the series of tears messages from an unknown number. Update. 
Excuse you tomorrow. Can't believe it. Wow. Unknown number. Saturday. All of this was Saturday? Huh. AM? Okay. You never said you attacked him. A long silence hangs between you two. If our friendship meant anything to you, then why didn't you stop? You knew what they were capable of after they, the tabloid cover. Would you believe me if I said I had no choice? Yeah, there's always a choice. And you made yours. You, you may have done the same in my position. Abuse my position as a TA to spy on a student? Not likely. You don't understand. I was backed into a corner and... If you came here to give me an excuse, Zena, then you can leave right now. I understand, then. And if you allow me, I think I owe you the full explanation. You deserve to know why I was willing to compromise everything I stand for. Fine, start talking. It'd be better if I showed you why instead of just telling you. No way I'm not falling for that. It's not a trick. You can bring all of your guards. It's just there's someone I need you to meet. You look at her for a long moment, searching for any signs that she might be setting you up, then turn to DeMarco. I need an escort to... Where are we going, Ada? Not far. The hospital on 28th Street. Copy that. A hospital? <sighs> Let me guess. Let me guess. Is she being threatened or something? Or let me if she does this, she can use the money to save either a kid, her father, grandmother, mother, any family member or si sibling, I don't know. Half an hour labor later. <laughs> said labor. <laughs> You follow Aina through the twisting labyrinth of hospital corridors. She walks like she's made this journey a hundred times. Aina, what's going on? Who are we going? To, who are we here to see? A deep breath. My dad knew it. He was diagnosed with colon cancer last year, stage three. Oh, I know that. Uh, I don't want to talk about it, but y'all know what that is. What does this have to... Oh, I'm, I had no idea. Is this treatment working? Anna nods, wiping a tear from her eye. It is now. The doctors think they'll be able to surgically remove the last of the tumors now that, that the chemo has shrunk in them down. So why did you bring me here? How is this connected to the, your employer? He's paying her. My dad works for the local government, and I'm a TA. We couldn't afford his treatment, even with our health insurance. Oh. I got a call about two months ago, about months after my dad's diagnosis. The guy offered to cover all of our medical expenses if I agreed to spy on you for him. So, who is this guy? He was good on his word. He paid up front. Before I even met you, he saved my dad's life. Giving him information on you seemed like such a small thing in return. You take a deep breath trying to process everything. Okay, I get that you were trying to help your dad, but you put my life at risk. I didn't think the man on the phone wanted to hurt you. He said he just wanted to expose you as a spoiled rich, spoiled rich first son to recreate a scandal. And you agreed just like that? It didn't seem like a big deal at the time. Not with my dad getting worse every day. I didn't realize you'd be so different. It shouldn't matter that I'm different. Even if I had just been another entitled first son, you still should have, shouldn't have spied on me. 
You're right. I know. You're right. I believed him because I wanted it to be that simple. That me... Simple. For me to be less to blame. There was no other way to cover my dad's treatment. Don't you have a government program to cov- to convert law low-income patients? Why did you just apply for that? I did, but it's all but it's an outdated program with a loophole that lets them disqualify most of the people who apply for it. Trust me, I fought with representatives for weeks for it, over it, and they modeled it after Ruthland's legislation. Wait. Can't be right. Yes, it is. The last president of Rutherland used used it as a band band aid to look like he was taking action on health care without actually doing anything and your mom hasn't even tried to fix it. So you really were backed into a corner. Does your dad know what you did to get this treatment? No, he thinks I managed the managed to get him into the government's program. So you lied to both of us. Please, Anthony, I'm not proud of what I did, but it seemed like the lesser two evils at the time. I'd do anything for my dad. He gave up everything to raise me after mom died. Ana falls silent and sl- stops outside a patient of a a patient room. A man lies on the bedside, his face hidden behind a book. She turns to you. Please promise you won't say anything to him about what I did. It's not for me, for for him. It would destroy him. All right. You see him for Agent DeMargo and your other eyes to stay outside of the room. You follow Anna in. Dad? The man lowers his book. His eyes glow at the sight of Aina. Aina, I didn't know you were just coming to see me today. Last minute plan. I have someone I want you to meet. Dad, this is Anthony Williams. Anthony, this is my dad. Anthony Williams, the first son of Ruthland. Well, this is a treat. He sits forward, holding his hand out to you. You take it, and he gives you a warm, firm handshake. I'm so sorry to hear about your condition. That's kind of you. It's been a tough year. We've had some difficulties, but Anna is relentless. She got on the phone and made everything work. I should thank you and your mother, too, Anthony. I believe our government's program is based on yours. You glance at Aina, she sends you a silent pleading message. No thanks necessary. I hope... She can expand the program even further in her next term and inspire your country to do the same. If anyone can shake things up, it's her. Can't believe An- I still can't believe Anna was the one all this time. I didn't want to believe it, but it happened. Dad likes to keep up with international news. He's a big fan of your mom's. I'm sure if... I'm sure if she had the chance to meet you, she'd say the same. Dad, are you comfortable? Let me adjust your pillows and I'll get you some water. Careful, Anna. You're going to put the hospital nurses out of the job. Watch Anna and her dad. and You can tell that they they dotty on each other. It reminds you of the way you and your mom used to be. What would I do if I needed to save, save her? Mom, for mom if I had to save her life. So, why did you drag poor Anthony to this sad corner of the city? Surely you and the first son have more interesting things to do. Oh, uh... We came because I wanted to meet her hero. He looks f- from you to Aina, his eyes filling with happy tears. How much did you pay him to say that? Come on, Dad. Everything I know I learned from you. Aina takes 
He takes Aina's hand and squeezes it tight. No one could ever be prouder than their kid of who I am. Though I'm sure the president could give me a run for my money. Uh, are you sh- are you are you as good as your mother good to your mother as Aina is to me, Anthony? I tried to be. The door opens and a nurse enters the to take his vitals. Anna kisses her dad's forehead. I think that's our cue. I'll call you tonight. I'll clear my schedule. It was very nice to meet you, Anthony. Same here, Mr. Seth. Please, call me Arjun. Okay, Mr. Arjun. You and Anna step back into the corridor, closing the door behind you. She meets your eye. Thank you for being kind to him. Of course. I'm sorry he's going through this. She wipes her tears and wraps her arms around herself. I know this isn't this doesn't make up for what I did, but I hope this at least helps you understand why it happened. I forgive you. I don't like what you did, but if I'd be in your shoes, well, I can understand how you did it at least. Thanks. I don't deserve it, but I'm grateful. So what happens now? Between us, I mean. I don't know. I still need time to process everything, and so do you. I really don't know how to get out of this, Anthony. We'll find a way. The two of you make your way back to the hospital entrance, and his eyes distant and troubled. By the time night falls, ugh, you are emotionally exhausted. You lay on your bed thinking, please don't tell me someone jumps us at night. Marsh curls up beside you, purring gently. What a day. What do you think of all this, Marsh? He, he licks your chin and you scratch his cheek, falling back into thought. This is so much to process. I don't want to bust Aina, but I need a second opinion. Time should be on duty now. Maybe I'll fill him in on what I found out. You step into the room and approach the front door, but you pause as you realize you can hear Tanlin's voice coming from outside. His words turn your blood to ice. You're taking me off heavy security detail? What? That's it? That's it? You gotta be more shocking than that. Oh. I wonder who's kicking him off. You uncovered more, more of the plot against you, but what will you do without Tanum to protect you? I mean, we already learned the self-defense thing, so, so I don't know. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of any videos I put up on my channel, hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video.